Okay, we're back. We're live at 5 o'clock on a given Friday. And we're talking about research to Manoa because, you know, tech is our middle name and science and tech are together. And we are always uh, interested in following tech and science in Hawaii. Research to Manoa refers to science and tech. It refers, in this case, to the Institute for Astronomy, which would very much like to see the TMT, um, you know, get built. Following the show, why don't we just forget about the rule of law? That's tongue in cheek because we do have a rule of law. And Sam King II is here to discuss that with us. Um, we want to ask the question, uh, who is representing the state on TMT under the rule of law? Well, welcome back to the show, Sam. Thanks, Jay. Good to be back. You are the um, coordinator of EMUA TMT, the rally. Uh, you've been here a couple of times, and we've talked about the rallies that have happened, or uh, the rallies pro-TMT. Uh, can you tell me what's happened since our last discussion two weeks ago? Well, so we've been trying to, you know, fundraise and get more support behind our group so we can start doing more social media push and getting the word out and, you know, buying swag and getting a website and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're getting more organized and we're trying to get out there and tell our story more effectively, the story of Native Hawaiians and the people of Hawaii living together in harmony embracing the future and respecting our culture and, and moving forward and being able to honor the sacred, but also advance human knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're coming from. <clears throat> What's happened on the other side? Uh, oh, there has been other rallies, right, since we spoke? I think recently there was a rally on Maui, a pro-TMT rally. I think there's going to be another one on Hilo coming up. And mm -hmm. then uh, Wahoo, we're going to be working on another one coming up too. So mm -hmm. we'll be keeping in touch with everybody about that. Um, we are, it's not really all about rallies at some point. At some point, you got to talk to the people in charge and the governor and figure out and, you know, write letters to the, the TMT and the funders of the TMT and make sure that they know that there's still the majority of people in Hawaii supported and you know, a large group of Native Hawaiians. You know, the, the Civil Beat came out with a poll that said something like 44% of Native Hawaiians now supported versus previously 72%. I haven't figured out what the margin of error on that is. It's probably like 10%. So it could be over 50 or under 30 right now, or 34% supporting and opposing right now. But you know, just like the, the protesters didn't care what the polls said back when they were trying to change the narrative, is the same way that I don't care what the polls say. I want to tell my story about that what, you know, it's, there's a Native Hawaiian story out there that is a perfectly legitimate story, despite what the protesters keep trying to tell me, that we can embrace Mauna Kea and the sacred and Mauna Kea can embrace the telescopes, and Native Hawaiian culture can embrace that mm -hmm. kind of science, that kind of use of land. I saw that uh, article in Civil Beat, and I had the impression from it that from a time, what, a year ago, when uh, the uh, support for the telescope was something in the order of 77%, mm -hmm. the actual identifiable support has, has, has declined. Mm -hmm. um, and for, I guess, the, all this protest has had an effect on the average Joe and how he feels about it. And people are, at least some people, are gravitating toward the opposition rather than to support the TMT. Am I right? I think that's absolutely right. And I think, you know, that's, that's democracy. That's how it works. That's why we don't, we don't run our democracy based on polls. And just like you, you go out and you, you make your argument. You say your position and you see if you can persuade people. The pro-TMT side, you know, the grassroots efforts that I'm contributing to, we, we didn't think we had to be going out there. Everybody was supporting. The rule of law was on our side. We voted for these politicians who were supporting it, so it was pretty clear which way we wanted to go in a democracy, law-abiding society. And then, meanwhile, the protesters knew that for two years, they, they I guess, I'm assuming, they knew they were going to lose or thought they were going to lose in the contested case hearing because there's been, this project is so good and has done so much to accommodate so many things and has done so many things right that, there would be no reason for somebody who's actually looking at the evidence to rule against it. Yeah, I want to talk about in, that in, in some detail. That's really the core point of our show today. Right, but just to say, the protest has been doing this for two years. They've been organizing for two years to persuade public opinion, and it worked. The, the governor, instead of just arresting everybody and getting moving, he let them have their space, and now they've been using it as a platform and bringing the rock. You know, they, get the, they got all the people there doing hula dances, and they can you know, play the cultural card, and the rock will come down to get pictures, and Jason Momoa will come down to get pictures. Feeds their Instagram, gets you know the word out about whatever movies they're doing and that kind of stuff. So, if people showed up, that gets you attention. 
that makes everybody think, oh my gosh, every single Hawaiian in the whole state is against everyone. Every native Hawaiian that hates it in the whole world, that seems bad. And I would agree that would be bad, except it's not true. It's not true, yeah. So since we met last, um, you know, can you kind of update me on, on what's happened? Because, you know, this is all against the, the, back, the backdrop of a decision in the Supreme Court, which I want to cover with you, um, which, which uh, allows uh, the TMT to proceed. But in fact, they haven't been able to proceed because the protests have stood in the way uh, of TMT and all the other telescopes up there. Um, and what, you know, what has happened? I, I recall uh, hearing that the governor has, what, extended the period for construction. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Um, and um, you have various people, including the lieutenant governor, who weighed in against the project. Uh, so what, what's happened? What's well, the I action? I hadn't heard that the governor, lieutenant governor had come in against the project. I know he had come out against the declaration of emergency ah, at the time. It? I'm okay. not sure. He All never right. came out against the project as far as I know. I don't agree with his stance against the declaration of emergency. I think it's clear there's an emergency there. The rule of law is completely imploded, so it seems like an emergency to me. Yeah. And the governor's stance is that there's a threat to life if the construction equipment starts coming and the rhetoric coming out of the protesters, and I think that's completely legitimate also. I think it, it, when, when it's time to move forward, he should definitely declare a state of emergency. Uh, I have not studied the Supreme Court opinion in depth, but fundamentally, you are correct. The Supreme Court once ruled against a permit that they got from the Board well, of I Land I want to go into that in detail, but the question is, in the last couple of weeks... Oh, what's going on? So, <clears throat> yes. What has happened? So fundamentally, the, the rallies have changed the narrative that was going very much in the sense of all Native Hawaiians hate it. So we brought out the rallies and we brought out the people and we started getting people to see, oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. This is just a really loud social media campaign. So now everyone's been writing op-eds and they've been getting involved. They realize this is really important. So we're kind of at a, at a stasis point. There were the hurricanes, so everyone was kind of backing off. And I think now people are starting to have meet more meetings and get together. I'm not privy to all this information because I'm just some guy doing social media. Um, but I think there are people now having meetings, and I'm sure the protesters are doing the same thing. They're, I think they're doing some jam this weekend even, and so we're you know, looking at that and looking at doing, pushing, like getting advertisements out there. I'm trying to collect more supporters to be more public and convince people to come out. I mean, frankly, what's been going on a lot is if it's certainly on the internet, and it's harder to prove in person because the, you know, you got to have people admit, testify to this, but there's been a campaign of intimidation going on online for for months like what? Now. People, what, what are they saying? Oh, people threaten. I mean, it's like somebody threatened me on the governor's Facebook page to that they'll come after me later. There's somebody that's made a joke about kidnapping my co-organizer a couple of years ago. Somebody was made a news threats that were covered by the news about slitting my Lonnie Neal's throat. And it's just this is constantly, especially if you're a Native Hawaiian, they need to discredit your claim to your Native Hawaiian identity if you support the TNT. So they they say you're a fake Hawaiian. They say you're a traitor. Somebody posted on. Lepa Babayan, who is a uh, Polynesian you know, Hokulea navigator, said, oh, he's a fake Hawaiian, and he, he'll go down in history books as a traitor. People writing this out. And so that's just constant. And, and undoubtedly, it's happening in the schools. I mean, they're having, you know, wear your Mauna, Kea, Mauna gear day. It's like anybody who hears it is like, what is this, Kill Howley Day? We're bringing it back every Wednesday? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I saw a story. Somebody, somebody was posting on one of the Facebook groups about Pro TMT, and she was like, she didn't want the story to be shared because she... You know, she's trying to keep the community together, which I appreciate. But she's like, my, my kid was at school, and some kid was yelling Mauna Kea at him. And then the, like the, the kid's mom was trying to keep him quiet, and the kid was like, oh, what difference does it make? He's just a Howley. It's like, this is what we're, this, we, got, we got the next generation being indoctrinated with the story of victimization and how every, everyone's after the Native Hawaiians, and Native Hawaiians all hate this telescope, and they want to go back to being taro farmers working with their hands and have no houses. Oh, it's just not. The reality, and they don't, that, that's not the reality that everyone believes this narrative. There's certainly a reality that people do believe it, and that there has been hurt, and that there has have been wrongs, and we can address those things. And the state of Hawaii has addressed them. The state of Hawaii's been paying reparations for years. Have you had any years. meetings with them? Have there been actual sit downs anywhere along the way? I have no idea if there have been people sitting down. I flew to Mauna Kea. I went up there, I think it was last week, Friday now, and met with people that I saw up there. And so I. The governor, the, the former gubernatorial candidate, Andrew Tafol, was up there. I was, I was talking. Well, aside from the meetings on the mountain with the governor and the lieutenant governor, um, have there been actual meetings, like in his office, meetings where people were able to exchange ideas and possible solutions? I don't know if the governor has been meeting with the protesters. I think he's been meeting with his own people. 
Now, what about in court? Um, you know, you have this decision of Supreme Court, um, and um, it's 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 not it's not being it's not happening. It's not being implemented. Is the governor taking steps to implement it? I know there were arrests. Uh, I doubt anybody's in jail at the moment as we uh, speak. Yeah, I don't think An arrest usually means you have to cope with the law enforcement. Stuff. But I don't, I don't think that went very far, and I don't think anybody's actually been charged with anything. Uh, they just got arrested. I'm um, not sure how that works legally. But the question is, um, you know, has the, has the state, or for that matter, the county, taken any steps to enforce the decision? As far uh, as I know, as far court. as I know, the county hasn't done anything. So, and I've also been hearing that you know I, that OHA is providing porta potties, or maybe the Department of Health is providing porta potties, and maybe the Department of Transportation is providing dumpsters. I'm not really sure what's going on up there, but I think to some degree, the politicians have. Gone, I mean, like Mayor Kim went and met with them. I think what they're saying, they want to. They're, I think they're they're taking the situation seriously. They want to. They're looking at the situation, and being look. We want you guys to have your voice. We want you guys to discuss. We understand that there is the rule of law, but the rule of law is all about enforcement. And there's an extent to which that we give our prosecutors, police, executive branch leeway to enforce law. And I think there's a reason courts do that because, you know, and the legal system allows for that They're, because they admit that there's a political dimension to life because that's reality. And so the legal system can handle that kind of thing. They can say, look, okay, we understand there's this political dimension, so we want to play for a balance. But at some point, the governor and the mayor have to move forward. And I think it, it, it's, it's complicated because of the land ownership up there. I think it's all a lot of Department of Hawaiian Homelands land. So the Department of Hawaiian Homelands needs to issue a statement of some kind saying, you know, you're trespassing on the land. Please move. If they don't move, then they can be arrested for trespassing. Mm. They can be arrested for blocking the road or maybe obstruction, uh, maybe zoning laws, permitting laws, that kind of thing. So you, you pick, pick your law that they're violating, which there's a couple, and then you you move forward and you have to enforce it. And so far as I know, no one has done any of that. Well, from a legal point of view, well, let's go let's go to the beginning. So these guys, the TMT consortium, came to town ten, maybe fifteen years ago. I remember we we had them speak at the um, at the Hawaii Venture Capital Association because it was a big deal and involved billions of dollars and. And they said they were going to dot every I, cross every T, whatever it took. Um, and of course, they met, you know, objection, and they met bureaucracy. They met a lot of bureaucracy, and they went on and uh, litigation, maybe the wrong word, regulatory process that went on for years. They wound up in the Supreme Court once or twice, maybe. I, I think don't... it's twice. Yeah, twice. Okay, can you? Fill me so, in on what happened there. So I don't know every single step, but fundamentally what they needed to get was a conservation district use permit. So they filed a conservation district use application. I believe it went to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, which had to approve it. The first time around, what happened is the board voted on the application first and then had a contested case hearing. And the Supreme Court then said that has the appearance of unfairness. Not that it was unfair, it just has the appearance of unfairness. And therefore, you have to go do it again. And what the Supreme Court was objecting to, and the, what, they, what they were objecting to was you making a decision and then having a contested it case a here to, to, to talk about it. But the reason the BLNR does that, and the, their lawyers were saying this is a perfectly acceptable process, is because they were saying, look, we haven't done anything yet. If we don't make a decision, then there's no hearing to contest, right? There's no reason for us to have a contested case hearing because no rights have been violated, nothing has happened, which is actually a pretty reasonable position to take, but the Supreme Court disagreed. So now the Supreme Court says, now you must have a, basically a trial with absolutely no rules of evidence, and you just have everybody come and give their opinion to this board, which is now a mini legislature that will approve the project. And so the second time around, that's what they had to do. They brought in a Ricky Mayamano, and they had this retired judge, and she heard all the evidence, and she brought in all these motions, and everybody, all the protesters got to bring in all these people. I think there were like 27 parties participating. Whale was one. Very long and testimony, I think days it was three and days. months, well, like a month's worth of testimony, but it took three months total. And then at the end, each side submits their proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law. The hearing officer, Judge Mano, took them, changed it up to what she her conclusion was that during that process, also, they went on a site visit. They went to Mauna Kea to, to look at the site, actually, where it was. So 
It's a, it's a very informative document, like, and I've said it before, everyone should just Google findings of fact and conclusions of law 30 meter telescope. I think it was 2017 the decision came down. Just read it, they, they cover it. It took it. a long time. And the first two pages, an excellent summary of the whole situation, they lay it out, and the judge was fundamentally saying, there, there's no pollution, it's a zero waste facility, they're paying a ton of money, there's no cultural impact to identified historic sites. There are people that consider the entire mountain sacred, but in the end, you do not have a religious veto over property that is public. And so, therefore, we're moving forward with the project. It is a good project. It is, it is mitigated and accommodated all interests, as more than anyone ever has done on Mount Ikea, except to not do anything. And then she issued her opinion. It took the board years. Of, it took, took years. years. The Board of Land and Natural Resources then voted on to, whether or not to accept the findings of that conclusion of the law. I think there were maybe two dissenters out of seven or something. And then... Then that was appealed. It went straight to the Supreme Court, I believe. And then the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the TMT. And so that's why now they can move forward. The last time the protesters were holding out for the Supreme Court, the Supreme what Court What was the second them. appeal about? What was the second appeal? Same thing. It was the same fundamental issue, that it's a violation of a conservation district use permit and it just shouldn't so be So these there. things were actually raised three times. They were raised in the original application for the permit. Then they were raised in Four the Ricky times. Mount... Four times. So original permit, original Supreme Court decision, second permit, second Supreme Court decision. Okay. Yeah. And finally, the Supreme Court ruled, I guess it was final of all these issues, the Supreme Court ruled that, yes, the permit had been or could be validly granted. Yep. And, um, and it's a and valid the, use of the, the space. Valid and use. Legal. And the uh, TMT consortium was entitled to go forward. Yeah. yeah. That, is, that is how the... That is my understanding of how it worked. And, so, and the respondents in all of this were, what, the consortium had to be involved, the uh, Uni University of Hawaii had to be involved, who else, anybody else? Uh, I think the other side that was pro-TMT was uh, Pueo, so Preserving Unique Educational Opportunities, which is a group of native Hawaiians that, you know, they're, they're interested in education primarily, but they, in, they were, they, in, they put themselves into the case, in the contested case hearing and the Supreme Court to provide the Native Hawaiian story that says, no, actually, this is acceptable. This is a good thing. So we so everybody had this. a voice. So everybody had a voice in that process. And there were far more <clears throat> individual protesters that joined in. And people like me didn't go. I, I could have done that, but I was working uh, hard at the time, and I hadn't decided to give up everything to go and put myself into the contested case hearing. So you know, kudos to the people that, that did put their time in on, on both yeah. sides. It's important. it's important to have that discussion. But as we've said, the discussion was had. It was actually evaluated. And that's one of the reasons I'm so upset about people like The Rock who just show up, right? It's like, I, I email The Rock's agents, his people, and I'm like, come down here and talk to the Native Hawaiians that support this project, because you didn't do that. It just looks like you're just showboating. And no response. Yeah. And I'm not surprised. I mean, I mean you know, it's social media, you got to get on social media to shock him. He's got stuff to do. But, but you'd think if you want to be the moral authority, you got 150 million followers, all these guys, you'd think you would want to come and hear both sides before you come down with the the Hawaiians are hurting and this like the Hawaiians, right? The this, the that. It's always this is the absolute. When it's not true. And you would I, I think these social media people in general have a duty to really be more responsible for with what they have. I mean, there's and we've crossed the threshold with social media where you can't people just kind of treated it like a game for a long time and now it's having real consequences for the body politics. Well, for the lack of, you know, government uh, action to enforce the decision of the Supreme Court, this has become um, uh, a sort of an, an open media opportunity. Yeah. And day after day, week after week, um, and, and I guess until something else really you know, dramatic happens, this will continue to be an open media uh, activity. And, and so instead of this being resolved in the way controversies, controversies are resolved in, in this state and the country, this is being resolved in the, in the media and um, on the streets, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's true. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what does this mean, though? Because it's got all kinds of implications when you have a, a final. It must have cost the parties millions to spend 10, maybe 15 years a of lot time of applying and litigating and applying and litigating and arbitrating and litigating. <clears throat> so after all of that, we, we really don't have a result that people respect. Uh, this is troublesome because it has implications beyond TMT, don't you think? 
I absolutely think so. I think, but there's a couple ways to look at it, right? So for starters, there's there's the position that it's it's really just a telescope at some level, right? Like at, at the bottom level, at, at one level, it's like, if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the universe because, you know, okay, it's bad for astronomy, it's bad for Hawaii's economy, it's bad for any attempt to bring tech to Hawaii and create new jobs for the kids and like bring a, you know, a third leg to our economy that's not tourism and, and the military. But, you know, we'll still, life will, will, will go on in that sense. And it's hard for these particular style of protest to protest every single activity because this is a unique situation where really slow, heavy vehicles need to drive up one road that you can sit on top of, right? And get social media. So it's like a perfect storm, which is why they're using it. So on that side, I'm not like, this is not pitchforks. I, oh my God, it's the end of the world. But there's definitely the case, but there's, there's also my point of view, which is it's bigger than a telescope. And I think even the protesters agree. It's about what the story of Hawaii is going to be and the native Hawaiians and what we're going to tell our kids and what they're telling their kids and what I'm going to tell my kids. And it's about, you know, do you want to just be about, oh, everybody, you want to do research day after day about how everyone's taken everything from you and from your family and everything is bad all the time, which may we well be the case for some small set of people, but do you want it to be extrapolated to absolutely everybody that shares your race? Or do you want to say, look, the past is the past. We can address the wrongs that did happen. We're paying reparations through OHA and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And we can embrace uh, the future and technology, especially projects that are actually paying money that will go to OHA and you know, ma management of Mauna Kea. And do you want to look at our culture as embracing the future and not having to return us to, like Aleppo points out, like the Stone Ages, where it's like, oh, we don't want any stars. We don't want, need that. We can do everything with naked eye, as if that's the story of humanity. I, I think, I, I don't know if I said this before, but it's, it's fundamentally this problem, right? If you want to, I think some of the protesters, maybe not all of them, I don't know, but I think some of them have said this, and they believe that we don't, and you can see it on social media, they want to go back to a time where you can just, you know, farm anything with your hand. You don't need to have telescopes, all this technology. We, you can have STEM, like they make a joke about, oh, we don't need STEM, we have tarot STEM, right? As if that's the point. But it's like, the moment one of the kids you have, who's farming in a lo'i or any, like doing any sort of manual labor, the moment that person wants to use a machine to do the per work faster, you're going to get right back here. You might, you might push us back for a hundred years of research, but you're going to end up right back in this position because that's how humanity works. That's how life works. We advance forward. There's, I think it's bigger than just this single group. I think there's a movement across the whole world to say, no, we don't want any advancement anymore. We don't we don't want property rights. We want the government to own things and then control everything and not move forward at all. We want to be an ag agricultural society and you know, live in beautiful bucolic settings. But it's all fantasy world because at some point, if you just have farms and no industry, you can't protect yourself against the people that mm. could care less about your utopian vision. Yeah, one day you're going to get a cavity in your tooth. It's just that's and you're why you need a dentist. That is why <laughs> it's important. That's why I'm. That's why I'm spending my free time. That's why I came down here, and I have to. I'm going to have to go back home and explain to my wife. Just, Thanks for letting me come down here, where you spent uh, 30 minutes with the kids, right? I want to. I'm putting my time into this because I think it's important. I think it matters. I think you're right that there are. This is going to have ramifications, and I want to tell a story. That's positive, and find and meet the people that want to tell that story. Is it a matter and, of money? You alluded to money a couple of times, and I wonder if reparations or some payments to or through OHA or other Native Hawaiian organizations. Is it a matter of money? Do you think uh, is this ultimately leading to uh, some kind of payment? I don't know. I don't think so. I think some of the protesters, the leadership, I. I actually have no idea what their secret motives are. It seems to me, if they're public statements, it's absolutely not about the money. It's about the sacredness of the mountain, and it's about, you know, it's violating their culture. I think, I think I've, I've heard, and I think it's a perfectly reasonable analysis, that there's a power to say no that's at stake here. People want to be able to say no mm. to something, and mm. they feel like they can never say no. I, I mean, I think that's incorrect analysis of the situation. I think you can say no, and I think you can have a discussion. It's just... You don't get to just say no and then everyone has to listen to you just because you said no, right? That's the whole point of the legal system. Well, you it's, know, this, the state of Hawaii has been trying to develop a tech industry since, since John Burns, since statehood. 
one governor after the other. I mean, even the Kingdom of Hawaii was trying to do it. Yeah, that's true. Kalakaua wanted that. He was, he was very advanced and enlightened about science and technology. But we just never seem to get there. We don't have a tech industry to speak of now. Um, and we don't have any real political will to develop the tech industry. And this is a, this is a bad blow to that, I think. I it's also a bad blow to resilience of the economy because if tourism stopped for some reason and we had no other leg of the stool um, like tech, you know, what happens then? You know, everybody's got to eat and I'm afraid uh, we'd be jeopardized. Well, I'm not sure that uh, a lot of the protesters care what happens, to be honest. I think there's a subset of people, and, and I keep saying subset because I don't know if they all think this. I haven't run a poll of all the protesters, but there's definitely a core group that's out there saying, and I, my hypothesis would be, and from what I've read and seen from the protesters and, and kind of people pushing the idea that we don't need development or we don't need other this tech, they just don't care. They like, don't care if people build houses here. They don't care if people move here. They don't really care if the kids are here. You know, they, they want their amenities that they have, and then everything else can leave. If there's no money, it's like, it's like, it's a, kind of like the Brexit syndrome, right? People in Britain now, they voted to leave the European Union. They don't even care about the economic da well, damage. It's about the philosophical point. And so, in that sense, they can accuse me of being, you know, greedy and it's all about the money. But, I mean, I have two kids and I'm trying to put them through good school and get them good jobs and have them be, you know, productive members of society. And just for myself, I want, you know, to have a nice house and, like, live a nice life. And I want my neighbors to have the same opportunity. So money's super important. You know, having growth, having those opportunities allows for everyone to achieve their dreams. That's so, the it happens, idea. It's a kind of a one-way street because if you go down the street and you, and you... You know, you stop this project. Uh, it's not like you can turn it on again. But Hawaii is getting a black eye among the capital interests on the mainland, on Wall Street, elsewhere. All these consortiums uh, involved, uh, you know, countries and global companies and universities everywhere. And if they get turned off and don't come back, that's permanent, or at least for a lifetime. And yeah. that's a great concern. And, you know, I don't know if you've heard anything about this, but... But there, there's discussion about whether the members of this consortium will continue to weather the storm. Uh, they may decide to drop out. If they drop out, TMT is over. And not only TMT is over, but anything like TMT is over for a long time, radioactive for a long time. I agree. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons I've been working to meet people that agree with me, like-minded people that want to tell a positive story of Hawaii and the Native Hawaiian people and Native Hawaiian culture and see it as an embrace of science and technology and, and honoring the past and the sacred. And so that the next time this happens, this group of people will be able to say, oh, yeah, we've heard this story before and we've been here before, so we want to be prepared for this kind of thing so we can tell the story we want to tell the way we want to tell it and really keep this, keep it moving forward so we're all together and, you know, sharing this well, kind of thing. Certainly not think, together now. Well, so let me ask you, the last part I'd like to inquire about, if, if, if the governor really meant to do something about this, if the governor meant to enforce the law, the rule of law, I mean, we, we can't just have it out in the street. We have to follow what we decided a long time ago. That is, the courts resolve controversies. How do you do that? How do you, how do you advance, uh, implement, enforce? The decision that took ten years to make. I mean, the the implementation is is pretty straightforward. I think the governor just needs to you know, close down the road and slowly you know, cut off the supplies and be like, okay, look, we're done here. We're going to move everybody in, start pulling the cars out slowly but surely, and just go down the road and you know just don't, just ignore the pressure and the social media pressure. Just ignore it because it's you. And all you need to say is, look, we're enforcing the law. We've talked about this. We've gone over it, and this is how it. This is the correct thing to do. This so is the he right doesn't thing to need do. another court decision. He does not need anything. He doesn't need he any just single do thing. It. He just needs to go do it. Him and the county need to go do it. Okay, all that we know, you and I have talked about this, what, three times? And I think so, yeah. As well as, uh, you know, in, in the context of the, the rally I attended a few weeks ago. Um, what do you think is going to happen here? What's the reality? I have no idea. Okay? I'm, I'm working to get my story out and to get support telling my story and the people that agree with me's story and, and the Native Hawaiians that believe in science on Mauna Kea, in astronomy, in tech in Hawaii. I think the more people that come out, 
the more people that speak in favor of TMT and this future, the uh, easier it'll be for the governor to move forward and enforce the law because he's a politician. He doesn't want to look like a bad guy. You know, it's easier for the social media personalities to back down, which is what they want to be able to do, right? They want to be able to say, look, we stood up and we said this, but it's obvious that, that there's another side to the story and, you know, we can balance and look, we've got you protection and, we, you know, they need a way out, right? Diplomacy. So I think the governor can move forward and enforce the law in that way, but the community is going to have to, I think it's one of the things is like, you're going to have, we're going to have to accept that this will be how it is and enforce the law. And you have to watch, you know, you have to witness them, the people that do be, are, that are arrested. You know, I, you know, I want to see, I want to make sure that their rights are respected, they're treated fairly and appropriately when the law is enforced, but it needs to be enforced because this is the bottom line. Here. So this, the system of government that has been impliedly proposed by the protesters is unworkable. Right? They fundamentally want to create a state-backed host culture religion. And they want that religion to be able to trump all other religions. And it violates fundamental tenets of what makes societies high function, which is the separation of church and state and the rule of law. And the moment you have a situation where you can say, oh, no, no, I can sit on this road, and therefore your two Supreme Court decisions and all this process you've done doesn't mean anything, and by the way, the reason I get to do this is because I have a special religion that's better than your religion. The, the society breaks down. And that's, mm. why I, that's why I live in this country. It's why I like this country, this state, the constitution that we have that also has the same principles. This constitution of the United States of America. And, just, and not even that it's America or that it's white. It's how societies work. That's the best society in my study of history is our society and the way we run things. There's always room for improvement. And that's one of the things I think is good about this. It's a good to have that conversation. It's important that people get energized because this is the time when minds are molded, when the iron is hot, and we should be talking about it. We should be addressing it. And my response is, the system of government you're proposing is unworkable. It is not a good idea. I don't want it. I want the rule of law enforced, and I want this project to go forward, not because of this project itself, although that is also a factor, but because that's how the rule of law works. Mm -hmm. All that considered, um, you know, further discussion, negotiation, you know, comparing ideological positions on this. Do you think that the consortium and its members who have spent a ton of money getting as far as they have are going to stick around? Because this is going to take a little while at the very least. And they have been patiently, I must say, patiently waiting. I are, mean, are they going to stick around or, or bail? Let me look at it this way, okay? They've been doing this for 10 years. It'd be pretty strange for them to give up when they have all the permits just because there's been a social media flare-up. I mean, there's social media flare-ups all the time. Everybody calm down, right? On top of that, where are they going to go? They said they could go to the Canary Islands. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, you just go to the Canary Islands, except now we got environmentalists in the Canary Islands being like, oh, no, we don't want you here either. So <laughs> there's nowhere to go, and there's no reason to try and go there because everyone's going to fight. To I, don't, I don't know why. It just seems to be the thing to do. It's a great way to get attention. But there's nowhere to go. And like, now that's the one thing about it, Jay. Like, they're, they're, like you said, right? What we lose is time. I don't think Mauna Kea will ever stop. The Mauna Kea is never going to stop being the best place to do science on Earth. Maybe if you get a, a space elevator or something ridiculous, you can put all your telescopes in space. But that's so expensive and so hard. And it's not necessarily better. It's not better. That's why yeah. we're doing it at Mauna Kea. Yeah. So there's no reason for the consortium to leave. You know, there's the, only the social media pressure and that story. But if they leave, then they're going to have to deal with it somewhere else. And you still want to do the science on Mount Achaia because it's still the best place. So, and the technology is not, you know, you can upgrade the technology and put better technology in the mm -hmm. telescope. But eventually it's like, what, if you leave now, you got to wait another, you got to do it all over again. Yep. So what's the point? You might as well just stay and hold out because they have every right okay. to stay and hold out. And the community is now realizing that, you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce came out with an op-ed, the business community came out and said, like, look, we have to enforce the rule of law. Everyone, you know, everyone's waking up and being like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got it. All the millennials are on social media. And that's what the, one of the things the poll showed, right? And Civil Beat actually had an interesting point about this. It was like, older people are in favor of the telescope and younger people are, are against it yeah. or, or kind of on balance in some way. And that's probably, I think it's only even Native Hawaiians in particular. I'm not sure even everyone under like 30 or whatever or gets it. But the point is that social media is big and it's anti. But then if you read like op-eds and people where they have to like sit down and really think and it's not just image and flash and they got to put their thoughts out, everyone reading the newspaper and doing that is like, 
oh, this is clearly a good idea. I got it. <laughs> so there's a generational divide there. There's a news media divide there. There's a way you get it. I think the more we push, you know, I'm, I'm working on getting more message out on social media, talking to people. I think you just patiently, you know, you have the conversation. Yeah, and it's and not, we should, it's we not should about... come back. We should come back here and have a further discussion on it, Sam. Absolutely. Thank you for coming down today. Sam Thank King, you. Samuel Wilder King II. <laughs> James Idell. Co Thank coordinator, you, co organizer of the, the EMUA TMT. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.